In this video, what we're going to look at is what happens if you have more than one data input. This is about training and the method of SGD, which is stochastic gradient descent. I found a wonderful HTML page that documents the basic ideas of stochastic gradient descent when you have multiple data sets and there are five different methods we're going to go over that Sebastian has outlined very well on the website given as you see it. So let's begin with version one of stochastic gradient descent. Before we start, you can see the HTML reference right at the top. So we have multiple data. We have data x1, label y1, and so on. And we have n data sets. Now, the true stochastic gradient says set all the weights, initialize the weights. By the way, they're initialized to zero, but maybe you have some idea of what they should be already, so you may not want to initialize them to zero. Then we do iteration. What is the iteration? The iteration is to update the weights using the data that we have. So this is how you do it. For each iteration, and there are capital T of them, and we will make this more precise in the forthcoming methods, you draw one example from the data set. And when you draw it, you, when you're done, you'll replace it back into the data set. You compute the prediction through your net, compute the loss, and then do the gradient update, which we've covered before. Delta W is minus the gradient of L in terms of uh, W, and then delta B is equal to the derivative of L with respect to B. So then you add the increments to W to update them, and then repeat for the next iteration. So the next iteration, you will have all the data again, draw a uh, representative sample, and that'll give you the next update for your weights and so on. So you're doing one data set for each iteration. So you pick, pick, and you have to do the random replacement. This is very important. Uh, it's a bit of detail, but basically if you don't do the random replacement, you will bias the weights that you get. Bias means they will be displaced from what the expected statistical value should be. You have to do this. All right, the second one is slightly different. We are going to introduce the idea of an epoch. An epoch is running through all your data. So let's see what you do. First of all, you shuffle all the data randomly, just like a card deck. And for each epoch, and notice there's a capital E for the number of epochs. This is the beginning of what we call hyperparameters. These are parameters that you pick. And some of the examples that we've done, we put, picked E equal to 5. Shuffle your data set. Then for every datum, compute a prediction. Do the uh, loss calculation. Compute the gradient of the loss with respect to W and then assign it to W and assign delta B and then update. Notice that for the, the gradient, we haven't assigned a learning rate yet, but we can do that later. The object of this is how are you going to use all the data to train your network to obtain the weights? Remember what we're doing is we're descending the gradient to minimize the loss function, when we minimize the loss function, the prediction y hat is close to the desired value y. That's the whole idea. So steps 2.25, 2.26 are going to be repeated 
in all these different ways of collecting all the training data in our calculation of the weights and their updates. Here's number three. For each epoch running through the data, well, what's the most obvious way to do this? Well, take all the data. In other words, for all the data, compute the prediction. Look at the loss. It's summed over all the losses for all the datum that, data that you've picked. Again, we take the gradient uh, of the loss function, minus sign, same with delta B, and then we update. So the difference is in steps 2.2 and 2.3, the entire data set. Where will it fail? Well, remember what we're doing is we're repeating for each epoch the entire data set. And if the entire data set is 3 million samples, for each step in descending the gradient, you're going to have to average over 3 million losses as illustrated by step 2.3. So if your data is very large, this is not a good thing to do. So what's, what are the alternatives? Ah, so somewhere between one datum at a time and all the data. So what's, what's the solution? You break the data up into strips or batches. So now, for each iteration, for the number of iterations, you look at M, M data elements. So you draw M with replacement from the entire data set. So now, when you get to step 2.2, you're now going to compute the average loss over M elements. That's why they call it a batch. So the entire data set, which is N elements, is divided to batches of M each. And you work with each batch. So once you have computed step 2.2, we go through the same procedure as before, but you're only going to do it the number of times that M divides into N. So, for example, if the number of data is 2,000 and your batch size is 500, then you'll do four batches. Here's a variation on that. <clears throat> this time, what do we do? Same idea as before for each epoch. First, we shuffle the data. Then we draw a random sample for without replacement to get our batch. So you have one to M datum data that you're going to have in that batch. To get that batch constructed, you draw M samples from the data but you don't put them back. Then steps 2, 3, 2, 4, and 2, 5 are exactly the same. Now, the question is, which one do you use? And that depends on the situation. Normally what happens is that the mini batch with or without replacement is the preferred way to go. If you remove the replacement part, then you're always going to be picking out of the entire data set. That may take longer to train. So what we have now is a complete way of training over the entire data set using the stochastic gradient descent model. However, there are other optimizers, and we will look at the optimizers in future videos. This is the simplest one. Remember, in what's common to all of these is the updates, the gradient, and the proper shuffling of the data is absolutely essential.